Model Car Builders, welcome back to the channel. I'm beginning to start my Monogram 1967 Corvette 427 Roadster build. And what I have in front of the camera now are pieces for step one uh, engine assembly. You see, I've already begun assembly on the engine. I know you all seen this before. I didn't have to, didn't feel like I needed to show you how to put a model car engine together. And this is all the pieces on the block that will be painted uh, Chevy orange, except for the transmission. I believe they were aluminum. I'll have to double check that. And as you probably notice, I've got all the parts either clipped to or glued on bamboo skewers and even the chrome parts. I am in the uh, the camp with uh, the YouTuber HBI guy which says you can prime and paint directly on the chrome you don't need to uh, necessarily strip it. This is especially true if you're using solvent primers and paints like enamels and lacquers. But I've even been successfully using uh, urethane primer from a Steinol res and as long as you don't handle it it's the primer is not going to come off and with engine pieces once it's together and assembled it's going to be there you're not going to touch it anymore it should be fine so these are all the pieces to the engine assembly and start in step one and uh, we'll move over to the spray booth get some primer on those and when that cures we'll go to the painting stage all right, I'm back here at the paint booth. I'm gonna start spraying these engine parts. And today I'm using Ravel Aqua Color. And choose your orange for the block. And it's a water-based paint. And you can pretty much thin it with any thinner for water-based paints. Today I just happen to have this off the shelf. Uh, Hataka is, is acrylic thinner and I'm fairly certain it's just your basic water-based thinner. If it doesn't work, you can use just water. That's fine. I, I don't have the uh, Revell Aqua Mix, so this should be alright. The Revell acrylic can be quite thick. Like this is this is almost a paste, but if you thin it down, it'll be fine. It comes back to life. Got these plastic shot glasses for from CVS. You can get 24 of them for a dollar. Get a cheap paintbrush.
there it is. Over the gray primer, the orange doesn't look exactly look like Chevy engine orange, but it'll do. So, and I did find out that the bell housing is orange on the 427 Corvette. The gearbox itself is a metallic. I'm just going to use aluminum. And when that dries, I'll just hand brush that part. So, I have to paint the rest of the pieces. And I'll be using uh, more Ravel Aquacolor, aluminum, semi gloss black, and steel. Alright, now it's time to get on to uh, step two. Gonna get these sub assemblies together, prime them, paint them, and then assemble them. There wasn't much to the sub assemblies for step two. Just had to assemble the rear differential and springs. These will be primed uh, painted black. The drive shafts will be steel. Then you got the inner fenders, they'll be black. Got two uh, shock absorbers. It says to paint these black, but to kind of add contrast, I'll probably I'm gonna paint those yellow if there are conies or Bilsteins. And then the drive shaft. That'll be primed and painted steel. And got the chassis with the upper control arms installed, the steering box, and the battery. This will all be primed and then painted black. And uh, detail paint the battery. And from step one, got the engine all painted and assembled, all using Ravel Aqua Color. I still need to put some decals on it. And when the chassis is primed and painted, that'll be installed along with all the other parts. So I'm going to get these parts in the primer, uh, painting, and then assembly of step two.
fitting that engine was a pain in the ass. First off, the transmission tail end was a little too long. I had to file that off to get the to get that to go in. And then the fuel pump was in the way of the control arm, so the fuel pump popped off before the engine could slide down on the mounts. But before that, I had to pull off the exhaust manifolds because they wouldn't clear the steering box. So I got the engine installed, left the fuel pump off, put on the exhaust manifolds on the bottom, and now it seems to be good to go. I got a little bit of paint touch up to do here and there, but I'm glad that's finally in. All right, I'm back. Here are all the pieces for the interior. All of these would be primed, painted semi-gloss black, and detailed with silver, except for the steering wheel. That's going to be a wood rim with aluminum spokes. And here is the interior. Glued on the far wall and the brake booster. All this would be black, semi-gloss black, with silver details and a black embossing powder carpet. So I'll get these primed, painted, and then detailed, and then come back and show you where I am.
guys and girls, whatever the case may be, I'm going to put down the carpet in the form of black embossing powders. So the way I do that is I just paint some enamel paint on the carpet and uh, dust the powder on. paint where you want the carpet to be. The enamel paint of course is the glue and the reason I use enamel and not acrylic is that it stays tacky longer. I'm not going to do the back because it's going to be covered by the trunk lid on the convertible. So you want to you want to be able to see back in there. Try to avoid that pad where your feet rest. Whoops. Mostly avoided. I'm using flat paint. One, because carpet is not shiny and it won't show, th if you miss a spot, it won't look so bad. But also, the flat paint is drying faster than the glossy. So, I better get some powder in here quick. Just pour it on and shake it around. Don't worry about putting too much. Just throw what you don't use back in the jar.
Doesn't look too bad. I missed a couple of spots. You can go back in there and touch those up. And of course, what's under the seat, you're not going to see it anyway. But I think I'm just going to leave that. back in the jar. Well, here is the completed interior. All painted and detailed with that chrome pen. Got the carpet in, steering wheel. All in all, pretty pleased. And with that, I'm going to end this video and we'll pick up with the rest of the suspension and the body in the next part. See you soon.